We'll start yeah, with you. Yeah, all good. Hi, Frank. Hope you're well. Hi. Hi, Vinny. Uh, obviously, Saturday was really enjoyable at Goodison. I know you spent a lot of time after doing your media duties as well, meeting fans, signing autographs. I think you're climbing over barriers at one point as well. Um, so when you reflect on that, what kind of impression did the whole day really make on you? And does it also give kind of an indication as to what it might be like if you were able to deliver success at the football club? Yeah, I think in general terms, it gave me a strong impression. Um, <clears throat> there's nothing I didn't expect. I, I know there's the, the stories of the, the passion of the fans, that they want to see a team that plays in their own image with passion and intensity and a desire to play for Everton. I think they saw that in the team, they reacted. That's what made the day so good. So the impression of me was great and I really appreciated the personal impression um, myself, the fact that um, the fans were very supportive of, of myself, um, but most importantly the team. So yeah, you know, if we can get something going here, of course, we need the fans, they need to see the players produce. That's, that will be the work that we have to do um, going forward. But yeah, it was, a, it was a really good day, but it's very important that I am the first one to say that it's just a start. It's a great day for me personally, great day for the team, but there's a lot of work to do. A good weekend for another Evertonian, Kate Smith, wearing the Tony Hibbert shirt as Boreham Wood, booked to place at Goodison Park. I mean, that was a heck of a story as well this weekend. Yeah, an incredible story, you know, for, for them as a club. I know the story of the, the chairman. I saw saw the delight in his eyes at the end, as, as you would, and this is the magic that the FA Cup brings, and for and for Luke and his team, every player, what a, what a great achievement. And they'll be very welcome uh, at Goodison, you know, in terms of, of Kane, I know he's a big Evertonian, but as a group, listen, we won't, I'm not trying to disrespect the game, it'll be our absolute focus near at a time, but great story, we'll welcome them, and then obviously we'll try and, uh, we will approach the game very properly. You said very early in your post-match interviews on Saturday, though, that this is a work in progress, so... What more do you expect that you can get out of this group? Well, some of that remains to be seen. I know there are good players here. I know that in the first week we, we, we had an impact, and I say that because it was clear to the eye, I think, in the game. There were lots of things that I liked. Watching the game back, there are things that we can certainly improve on, and that's only normal. So that, that's up to us, you know, what that looks like in one month, two months, whatever in the future is up to how we can get the message across, how do the players take it on, how the confidence builds. We, we, we know where we want to go and the players, are, I think, are very aware of that in the week. But these things do need time. Um, so we have to try and get results at that time. But in terms of the style and what the, what the, the basics of what the fans saw, that was a nice step in the right direction and, um, and we'll continue in that way. And with that need for results, Frank, how much of a defining moment in the season do you see these next two games? Well, they're important games, but I think we have to stay calm because there's a long way to go. We've come here with 18 games left. Um, so for, to put everything on these two games, I think, would be the wrong attitude. We just have to absolutely isolate them and focus on them in the right way against two strong teams. A game tomorrow night against a strong team that have just reinforced themselves with signings, have a, a you know, passionate fan base that can affect the game. So it's important for us that we just approach that. Um, without fear, with confidence, but an understanding of the hard game that it is. But I don't want to put too much on these two games. We've got a long season to go to get to where we want to be. Um, and at this point, it's about focusing on ourselves. How are you looking squad-wise? How's that injury for Ben Godfrey? Do you know how serious it is yet? And is Dominic Calvert-Lewin fit? Dominic's in the squad. So Dominic's been training for the last few days. Um, Ben came back from his scan this morning and will be a four to five week injury, hamstring injury, we hope, um, without any issues. Um, Decore is still probably three to four weeks away. Fabian Delph is four to five weeks away, to give you all the rundowns. And Deli Ali and Van der Beek straight into the squad? Yeah, they're in the squad. Um, I was pleased that they could see a performance that they saw the other day and the way we want to go. They've been great in training, integrated on the training pitch and off the training pitch as lads. So it's very important we're a tight unit. As the players showed the other day, there's competition in this squad now, which is only the only way it can be at this level. So great to have them both in and they're in the squad. Just finally, from me, Frank, on Delhi as well, because he's received a lot of support from the fans, because he's been criticised by former pros, one a former England manager, uh, you know, about things that have nothing to do with football. What, what have you made of that? I've got, I've got actually, I, I, I've, I've heard some of the, the reaction and I've got a lot of respect for everyone who's spoken, ex-players, people that I respect and admire and, and Ali McCoy, Alan Brazil, these people, Glenn Hoddle, that I would never go against their word. But when you're working closely with players, I'm working with Delhi. Um, my, my personal opinion is that, that I don't care 
what car he drives, what, what clothes he wears. As long as I get a lad that comes to training every day, wants to improve every day, respects the club, respects his teammates, and then produce, you know, and give everything to produce. And I think, you know, the modern day has moved on and it's changed. We all have to be very aware of that. And again, I'm not, I'm not hitting back at any form of observation because everyone's uh, allowed their own opinion. But I can only deal with what's in front of me. And when I just mentioned there that Delhi and, and Donny are, are both great lads, I mean it. And maybe Donny wears an overcoat that's longer than what Delhi wears, a, 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 you know, a different kind of jacket. That doesn't bother me as long as they produce on the pitch. Um, then I'm very happy with that. Everyone has their own individual personality to, to, to try and um, handcuff that or restrict that, I think could be detrimental. So as I say, as long as players do the right behaviours when it comes to football and doing the right things, I've got no worries. Cheers, Frank. All the best. Thank you. Thanks, Vinny. We'll go to James Cooper at Premier League Productions, please. Yeah, good afternoon, Frank. Hi. Um, a lot's been said and written about you in the, in the last week or so, but what, what impression have the players made on you and how have they changed perhaps your thought from the outside, seeing them in 16, to the reality of training with them and working with them every day? Yeah, but, well, that is the reality, though. So they are, we are 16th, and um, there, there'll be reasons for that. My... my the most important thing for me, I think, was to be quite clean, have a quite a clean slate in my own head, have a, an idea of the squad from outside, but just see what you get. And I've seen a really hard-working, um, humble, I think is the right word, group, a really good group of players that when you want to talk in week one and want to make instant impact, it felt like they were really ready to listen. Um, maybe lacking confidence, yes, I think that's normal with results. Um, but in the week, I saw a nice gradual uplift towards the Brentford game and, of course, a good performance. But it's up to us to now really continue that. But my impressions, in, in that sense, I, I can't fault a player in the squad. We have big challenges ahead and it won't always be an easy road, even in these 18 games this season. Um, but I can be happy at the moment where, where we're at and now we need to just focus on what's in front. Yeah, I mean, it looks like you've changed the mood already with, with a win. People are smiling. And I know what you've just said about the two games to come not being the be-all and end-all of the season, but you can change an outlook winning those two games can't you yeah we, we, we can we can and that's you know we have, we have to be confident in ourselves and we, we can change the outlook of course at that point you might start to be able to look upwards but we're not there yet and these are two tough games and it's the Premier League so yeah we, we're under, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm saying to stay calm because they're tough games and it shouldn't we've only been here a week as coaching staff to try and change a team that was losing very regularly it shouldn't be something that we have to go okay this is absolutely going to change and we're going to you know fly out of the blocks after Brentford and, and continue in that way the aim is that of course but we have to be realistic and that's why it's take the focus out of the big picture for these two games worry about them as they come see where we are after Leeds How hard is it kind of preparing for a Newcastle team when perhaps even Eddie Howe doesn't know at this stage which team he's going to pick Yeah that, that's, that's challenging um, because of personnel because of formation and, and Eddie I know can be flexible so we have to it probably again reverts back to being looking at ourselves and making sure that we get ourselves right be ready for a couple of different eventualities in terms of personnel in their team, maybe team shape when it comes out. Um, but that's our job. That's our job to, to deal with that. But yeah, there's definitely a, a few things here that we, we might not be sure about until we maybe see the team sheet or the game starts. Thanks, James. We'll go to Alistair McGowan at the BBC, please. Hi, Frank. Um, Hi. I just wondered what you'd made more generally of Newcastle since their takeover. Both obviously, you know, bring in a lot more revenue and, and we've seen the players that they've signed, but maybe from a PR point of view and their sort of associations with Saudi Arabia and what that can bring as well? I haven't focused on that. Um, in terms of seeing teams with the history and fan base and size of Newcastle, I welcome the fact that we're, going to, we're seeing teams in this, the greatest league in the world, in my opinion that are striving to improve and their fans are excited. Some of my friends are Newcastle fans and they're very excited. And I only, I only look at it in that way. Eddie Howe I've got a huge amount of respect for. Um, so I look at it with an interesting eye to see how the, the, they develop as a team, which they've already made moves to show the direction they want to go at and, and stay away from the politics of it. And just can I ask, a, well, I don't know if this is a political question, but just about the World Cup bid. You may have seen in the news today about... Um, Sort of the UK and Ireland associations going for a European Championship bid in 2028 rather than the World Cup bid in 2030. I just wondered what you thought of that. Yeah, I mean, I'm more focused on Newcastle than 2028 or 2030. Uh, as, as, a, as an Englishman, um, I love, you know, the, the Euro showed us, you know, the, the, the good side of the Euro from an English point of view, which were, were fantastic. And I grew up 
Um, Euro 96 was a huge impression on me as a tournament held in, in, a, in England with some you know, players that are my heroes. So I understand the want and desire of fans. Um, I don't know why the decisions are made to go for this tournament or not, but any tournament that could be played in England is, is great. But um, yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's, not my, it's not my line of focus and I'll just watch it from the outside. Thanks, Frank. I appreciate that. I'll let thank you get back to football questions. <laughs> thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Alistair. We'll go to uh, James Savundra at Talk Sport, please. Frank, it's obviously really positive news about Dominic Calvert Lewin. How important a role do you see him playing this season and beyond that? Well, with a player like Dominic, when you get offered a job like this, you, you get excited about the, the, the challenge as a whole, and then you go to the squad and you get excited about working with players. Because I've gone up against Dominic, I watched him from the outside, I like his attitude, his demeanour, without knowing him. I've found him great in the week I've been here. Um, and as a player, the talent that he has and the attributes he has, I love. So I'm very pleased that he's, he's here and I'm able to work with him, I'm pleased that he's fit now. Do we have to be a bit careful with him in these early stages? Maybe. I don't. You know, I haven't seen the injury. I know he's out for a while and has come back, and now a little setback. So I'll manage that situation. But in terms of the player himself, really excited to work with him. Do you see Donny and Delhi as players that can complement one another? What plans do you have for them this season? Yeah, I do because I wouldn't. I wouldn't bring them in if I didn't think they could complement one another in the same team. Um, it was an area that, of the pitch and, and that I felt that we uh, needed to strengthen. Um, they're two, in their own right, individually, I think very, very good players, intelligent players with different styles themselves, different attributes. So if we're going to be flexible in our system going forward, which at times I will want to be, um, then I think they certainly can play together and we can certainly complement it with the players we already have here. I'm not here to lean on those two too much because I know there's, I have to respect the whole squad. We saw performance the other day that showed that there's a, there's a lot to this squad outside of new signings. Um, but yes, they can complement each other and of course that's the work now. And finally for me, start tomorrow evening four points above the relegation zone. Do you see Everton being in a, a relegation scrap? I don't go that far. It's easy. It's an easy thing to lean on. Like the reality is there for everyone to see. Um, coming in fresh, I can only think about performance and results. So. Um, they will prove it or not. You know, if we can get results and get ourselves in a more comfortable position, great. We can start to look upwards. But at this moment, we just have to focus on our next game. Thanks, James. We'll go to Mike Hughes at Radio Merseyside, please. Hi, Frank. Hi, Mike. Um, for a team that's leaked so many goals uh, recently, how impressed were you with the overall defending? You've only had the the team for for a few days in training. You will have seen the videos from lots of matches so far. Uh, was it a pleasant surprise? Um, I was happy with the performance defensively. I, I always feel that the balance of attack and defence is it leans on how much you can have possession of the ball. Keep, I know it was a, it was a big fall out of the game, um, probably because of what I said going into it about how much possession we had. My idea is that you have more possession and there's less opportunity of the opposition scoring. We increased that a fair bit. I hope to increase that on a regular basis, so that helps. In terms of the defensive organisation, we worked on it in the week. Um, playing three centre-backs, I think, can sometimes give you more protection in those areas, and we worked on that in the week. So for me, it's always a mixture of what you do on a training pitch, what you get across in the messaging and meetings, and then the players, because they're the ones that have to deliver. And sometimes things can be confidence as much as they can be tactics. Um, so it was a nice performance. A clean sheet didn't come our way, but in terms of a lot of the work we did and, and getting up the pitch, which is always a help, I was pleased in lots of ways. It's a bit early on in the season to be talking about six-pointers, but, but given the proximity of Everton and Newcastle uh, and, and how tight things are, it is a really massive game, isn't it? And I know you said, listen, there's 18 games left. Of course there is, but this can add to momentum or, or maybe put a little dent in it. Yeah, it can be, and that's a reality. I think probably the good thing about being a new manager in is you don't feel the... The, the, the strain and pressure of that as such, I'm very aware of it. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell any lies and, and even to the players, but at the same time, I, I haven't been a part of what's been going on here before. So I look at the league table in a very straight manner, but when I actually speak with the players, I, I, I feel positive, I want to feel positive and, and, and have a positive outlook on it. And that's why I have to put perspective and say there's 18 games. We'll absolutely um, uh, approach this game trying to do the right things and win the game, but we would do if we were 10th, Eighth, six. You know, it's important that we just focus on ourselves and have belief in what we can do. So the the, 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 sever, the, the severity or whatever of the game is 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 on. I understand it, 
But my, my hopefully my, my fresh walking in the building, let's attack this in a positive way, is also something that I can, uh, can bring to the table. Four goals on Saturday, four different goal scorers, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Donny van der Beek, Dele Alli, all coming into the squad. It's a, it's a vibrant picture, isn't it, all of a sudden from Everton in an attacking sense? And, and it hasn't been that for, for the vast majority of this season. Well, yeah, I hope so. And, and, and there were there's some great um, parts of the game the other day. The, the, our front three were very, very mobile in their play, all offering uh, different attributes. But I, I love the way that they were... All three of them were able to come between lines to receive the ball, but also force defenders back and have a, an idea that they want to run in behind. So that, that for me is great to see. That's how I want my teams to play. And then when you add in the, the players that either didn't start the other day and obviously um, Donny and Delhi and Anwar Galzi, we have, we have options. So the, it's up to me to make sure we get the balance of the team right. But you know, a t- a t- a f- a fans and myself want to see a team that's exciting in the way they want to play and, and aggressive in the way we want to attack. That's how... I remember the great Everton teams growing up, so that's what I'll try and deliver. And you know, you're, you're as good as your players and your tools, um, and we have good players in forward areas. Thanks, Mike. We'll just take two more Thank in you. the uh, the open section. One from Carl Markham and one from Jerry Cox, please. Hi, Frank. Hi. You, you spoke earlier about earlier about not wanting to handcuff individual personalities. I'm just wondering. How how that benefits you on the on you know to impose it on the pitch in terms of having individuals who have their own you know ideas and, and thoughts and personalities. Can you can you incorporate that into what you want to do on the pitch? Does it make your job a little bit easier? I think the, um, it's a different question to the to what coat Delhi's wearing or whatever. I think it's more in terms of when you when you play and you have a game plan. The players have to have a discipline within that. So we have to have that. I, I'm not a, a fan of absolute freedom. I'm, you know, I think that's a very probably an easy way to to coach. Go on, lads, go and do it and show you express yourself. There has to be a plan. But I think when you do get to the top area of the pitch as well, particularly in the final third, it's not for me to tell, you know, uh, Anthony, or Damari, or or, or Daly or Donny what decisions to take as such in that area because that is where you. You want to give a little bit of a license for those players to, if they have got pressure from behind. Okay, you might have to lay the ball off if you've got space, drive and speed up the game. I think those things are, are for them. I'll always offer um, uh, freedom within the structure of how we plan, but the structure of the team is really important for me, so that the players have to buy into that first. Thanks, Carl. And finally, Jerry, please, Jerry Cox. Hi, Jerry. Sorry, you just on mute there, Jerry. Yeah. I think- Sorry, Got you, Jerry. All right, good, thank you. Good. Um, going back a couple of years, Delhi was one of the most exciting young players in, in Europe, wasn't he? And it, it, I think he overtook some of your goal scoring records and, and, and so on. Um, can you see him getting back to that level and, and what can you do to help him? Well, I, I don't want to put a, a line or a target on it because he was at an extremely high level. We all know that, you know, and I, I loved watching him play. He was so effective in, in, in the way he played. So I think where we are now, I th- I th- I, the last thing I want to do is sit here and say this is where we're going to get to. But what is clear is that a player of his age at 25 who has those talents that we all saw, those talents are there. So we have to look at the reasons around it as to to how we can help him get back there. And I talk about sometimes coaching and managing and as a staff being a service to the players. There's not a better example of having to be that in terms of what can we do for Delhi, what can the environment do for Delhi individually? How do we get him in the team and happy? And, you know, that might be a process. I certainly don't want to sit here and say, this will happen tomorrow. Delhi will be doing this in, in three weeks' time. But he's a talented boy. He's come to a new environment. He settled in very quickly in these days with his teammates. And, and I, the reason I brought him is because I want to see those qualities that he spoke about two or three years ago. And I believe that we can get them out of him. So, yeah, that, that's, that's where we're, we're aiming for. But I don't want to set absolute targets on him. And just finally, with with Delhi and Donny too, do you think there's some element of the, the frustration of not having much game time is going to be a real positive for you? Because they're going to be really bursting to play, aren't they? Yeah, and that's good. That's good. They can be bursting to play um, on both fronts. They've both got their different stories. Donny, I think, from the outside, I don't know the details of Manchester United other than they've got a very big squad and Donny's now with us. And he's a very talented boy. I've seen that in training in the last week. Very intelligent. I knew that when I played, I teamed against him in the past. Um, and yeah, they're, if they're the bit between their teeth, great. But you know, also we have other players in the squad as well, so it'll be in case of push yourself to get in the team and show because we're still Everton Football Club. It's a big team here as well. But I brought them in to come and play, but they have to make sure that they earn the right. And as I say, in week one, they've shown 
both to me both in training um, the reasons why I brought them here. So I look forward to seeing that on the pitch.